and we're recording. So, uh, Steve, take it away. Hey, buongiorno, Christian. Buongiorno, Steve. How are you? Come stai? Well, you like I... speak Italian. <laughs> Parliamo italiano un po', dai. Yeah, well, I run out of my good Italian. The rest I learned on the soccer pitch, <laughs> so I will not repeat it. Um, I use save that for when I'm watching how AC Milan play in, in the Champions League. But mm. um, there, I think there's a kind of a consensus uh, among the fans and, and even among the, the media who have been covering the team that this is ending too soon. That, you know, right now with the way the last four games have gone, that we're on an upward trajectory that the team is and that uh, it, it's just creating an appetite for more when the reality is um, we've got another 90 minutes on Sunday and then it's the off season is going to feel much longer than we want it to is how is that a similar feeling within the squad? I think, I think yes. And uh, we were talking before how only football can give you this kind of uh, uh, mixed emotions in a way it looks like a very long season for what happened, but in another way, it feel like, that we are ready to play a lot more, a lot more, and so it's kind of contradictory what I'm talking about. But it's actually the reality of our feelings, you know, the boys, uh, and these expected. They are. I told you many times. I told the press many times how the boys are increasing their intensity in training. They are setting standards really high in terms of. Uh, how fast and how strong they work. And so they are looking forward to see that in two games and uh, as they show in the last four. Um, so we would have loved to go further to carry on this uh, form a little bit longer in the, in the season. But at the same time, I think it's good to end uh, an activity with more appetite because we are already... Obviously, we are focusing on the next game that is coming really fast on Sunday. But at the same time, we already are looking forward to keep working together. So, you know, to have this appetite is not a bad thing. And, you know, in in my experience, like with the NBA, when their season ends and stuff, they're clearing out of their lockers and, and closing up shop almost immediately want you know within days of of the season ending what is the 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 plan here as far as i mean and I, i'm imagining yeah. that we will have a chance the, to speak the, yeah the exact plan in terms of exact dates we are actually finalizing it but uh, we will give it a week off because this is mandatory but then after we will bring the boys in again for another three weeks and we want to organize matches friendlies because we want to keep working on the things that we will work and keep adding. So we will be filling the week like if it was a normal week with videos of the training, videos of uh, our games, what we have done well, what we have not done well because we want to be totally focused on developing our identity, like I said many times. So it's not just words, empty words. It's, it's a content that we want to put and to become more and more familiar so that we can digest. And so the off-season will feel less long. I can understand NBA because I think they play many, many games. And every sport is different in any case. But uh, in, our, in our case, if we can use those couple of weeks, those three weeks to keep working and developing our identity and become more and more familiar with our principles of play, the better. And I know that the boys are, they want it. They are not uh, a lot, the vast majority. We have to see what happens with international guys, Carol in particular, because he will play the World Cup. Um, but uh, the vast majority, I think they are looking forward to that as well. How do how do uh, and because you just brought that up, I mean, how are how are the, the the squad reacting to you know you know Carol's success, you know, and potential to go with Poland to uh, to 
Qatar and stuff. Is that something that they're all taking pride in? I think so. I think that they is happy. It's good to see one of the teammates to do so well. It also create the belief that, uh, and I have no doubt about that. If you do well in this league, you the doors will open in in every league. I mean, we had uh, I had the experience in first hand with that already here, with Sergio going back to play in Spain, and people can say, well, you know, he was known already in Spain, but we had Jack Harrison coming from Wake Forest that actually went on to play in England, Middlesbrough, and then both by Leeds. We had a young Gale Herrera that came to us from Venezuela and went on to play in Spain. So the academy boys that we had in New York, very good, Gio Reina going to Dortmund, Joe Scully, Mönchengladbach, Gladbach, James Sands to Rangers, Glasgow. So I think that we have, uh, uh, it's possible, you do well in this league, People take notes. People take notice of how well you do. And I think MLS is taking very seriously. I know that for a fact because I have many friends that they are scouts in Europe, in big clubs, and they ask me about players. So, And they look our games uh, continuously, a lot more than they used to do in the past, but they do now. And uh, so to see Carol doing well, not just they are happy for the teammates, but they know also professionally that... Uh, Everything can happen for them if they do well here. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Good luck on Sunday. Thank you. All right, Mike. Good afternoon, Christian. Good to see you yeah. again. Good afternoon, Mike. I'm waiting for my movie question after that. All right, I'll, I'll, try, to, I'll try to think one up here in the next uh, couple of seconds. <laughs> uh, you know, with, this, with the season coming to a close on Sunday, uh, it, this is about the time I would think that the uh, the club would have discussions with you about your future. Have you had discussions uh, about returning for next season? Yeah, we have discussion, but I've not signed yet uh, anything. Uh, we hope to finalize, but uh, yeah, we are we have in discussions. Yes. And then, uh, in terms of what you what you see on Sunday for Red Bulls, I mean, the the you you kind of alluded to this after the game. On Wednesday, that uh, you're going to put you're going to put your best guys out there, and you're going to play to to respect the game and respect the league. Uh, what are you What are you looking term in terms of your your eleven? Obviously, not naming the eleven, but uh, the eleven guys that you you think will go out there to to give you the best chance to take care of them. And what does Red Bulls show you? No, we know Red Bulls is a very is a very strong team. Uh, we have a lot of respect for them. We already played twice against them. And it's always a challenge. It's always a big game. Um, and uh, you know, it's uh, we won. It's the third game in in a week, so we need to take into consideration also that. And um, but we want always to put uh, the the best team that we can, or that will give us the best chance to win the game. And uh, I know that there were a lot of talks about. Uh, the last game, the selection of last game, but in fairness, I thought that Joseph, Mora, and Jan, and uh, Queen, and Ben, they did uh, they did their job. And uh, the plan was always to make some changes half time. Unfortunately, we went one nil down with a with that uh, unusual goal. Let's say. Uh, but uh, yeah, we want to go to Red Bulls and play. The team that we think is going to be uh, in that game the strong, the strongest team, uh, and then it might be I, you know, we, when you have to make decision beforehand, it's always more difficult that to analyze afterwards. But and so, but the idea is to do a, to give a strong game to to play a strong game for us and to to try to do our best. Of course, there's a lot to play for anyway. You mentioned, uh, you know, the success that Carol going to play in the World Cup and that sort of thing. Is there concern that uh, players will, the players that are here now will perhaps want to go elsewhere, request a, or request a move at a time? I mean, uh, you know, when the time comes, is there is there concern about losing some guys in this offseason ahead of next season? No. No. And uh, I will explain why I don't want to look arrogant, but... Uh... I believe that uh, if the players don't want to be here, they shouldn't be here. 
So I think everybody is important, but no one is indispensable. And I think that the starting from me, of course, is not, uh, uh, but it's true for everybody. So the first thing we want is commitment to the football club, to Charlotte FC. So if they want to go, obviously there must be a reason. So far, I can tell you, I can assure you that everybody wants to stay. As far as I know, nobody is asking to leave. Uh, and so if that's the case, if our boys do well and they get big offers, I think it's only normal. That's true in every football club. You might do well in a top club and then someone always bigger than you might come and look for your players. This is success, success of the football club, success, individual success for the player, collective success. So we don't want to stand in the way. Of, of course, we don't want to be a club that is going to be taken for a ride. If a player is doing well and he has is putting value to himself, is rightly that he needs to be. Uh, we have to be compensated for that. And if he wants to leave, we will leave. But obviously, we want to stay with the with the best players we can. And as far as I know, most of the well. Uh, at my knowledge, everybody everybody's happy to be here. And, and one more uh, one more team related item uh, in terms of player movement and kind of you know Steve kind of touched on it saying it's it's ending too soon mm -hmm. with all the successes that happened this season. It, and I know you can't name specific players, but do you hear talk around you know from other teams and other players perhaps saying boy it'd be fun to play here and, and has charlotte become a destination team in year one for guys saying i'd like to be here i'd like to be around this 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 team this organization these fans that sort of thing lisa my i i'm happy you asked this question because uh i wanted to touch in the last question you asked me and because there is also this side is we were talking about player going out but i can assure you obviously i cannot name names but I can assure you that there are many, many players, and not just from the, in this league, but also from Europe, that uh, they make inquiry, try to come. So they are they show an interest. Obviously, when you want to be, you don't want to sell yourself short, right? So there is always a little game that goes on. But I know that there is interest in uh, in players in joining, of course, MLS in general, but also Charlotte FC. I can assure you that. They see the atmosphere that is generated here. They see the the football that our boys are playing. And uh, I think that uh, there is also that, and not just players that they want to move, but also players that they want to come. That's why I'm not too worried, because I think that the first thing that I always ask also to our scouting department, as well as obviously having the big quality in players, to see quality players that can... Uh, improve us not just add to the squad but improve the squad is the the most important thing is them wanting to be here wanting to be in charlotte wanting to play in mls especially if they come from abroad they wanted to play for charlotte fc all right and so my my movie question for you i know you're you're uh, old enough Great improvisation to... i love it uh, you, you know i know i know you and i are, are similar in age so uh yeah. i have to ask you which which character in the godfather closely resembles <laughs> christian latanzio oh, oh, oh my god i mean yeah you have to put me with a criminal um you you could be the you could be tom the attorney you could be tom the family lawyer I no mean, that's okay. no no this is not the role i like this is not the, the, the role i like i like uh the role uh, i like is the godfather role but not because uh if you if you flip it in the right uh, in the right way, there is a there are some noble elements in him, I think, and the fact that he wants to also, given the age, and I am obviously the older of the group that I'm managing here, the one that they can go and talk to and to give some some advice, and also if they don't do things well, we all we also know, being Italian, how to deal with them. <laughs> No, Thank but it's, uh, yeah, 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 that's a uh, joke that aside, sweet. I think that there are some, this is uh, the, the consulting and the tutoring and the mentoring role alike. Thank you, Don Corleone. <laughs> Thank you. A couple more here. Grazie, grazie. Sam? <laughs> hey, Coach, well, um, you know, Mike uh, 
ask the question that is really a jumping off point for me. Um, I know you can't talk about specific players in other leagues or people who, who have attracted interest, yeah. but given the success of the season, um, has the front office told you that, that you might have more resources to play with in building that team for the second year? Yeah, I think the front office has been very clear in explaining how they want to improve. Uh, I think there will be more resources available. The organization and the Mr. Tepper are very supportive, and I want to thank them publicly because of that. And so I think that uh, they want to invest more and more in our in our football club. And uh, I think that we will see, uh, you know, a team that will be improved. And I think we should do things step by step. We should uh, have a good expectation, but to manage them as well because it's very easy to be carried away. And uh, I learned this lesson in the City Group, that they did things very, very well. When I joined Manchester City, they were great in managing expectation. Obviously, the pressure and expectation were high, but also, you know, the grad built gradually, and they became, from uh, the nosy neighbours, they became probably the best team in the world, or one of the best, for sure. So... It's a big lesson to be learned from one of the best uh, football clubs, football groups in the world, how we have to build gradually in order to be sustainable over the years and uh, to have a continuous growth. And, and then, you know, after the game on Wednesday night, mm -hmm. um, Anton told us that, you know, he felt and that the team felt um, that there was a lot more that they they could have done for you um, as the coach, that they had a lot more to give to do for you. Um, it was really clear. Um, you know, I, I, I think it was clear in, in that post-match uh, more than any other time during the year um, how much respect the team had for you um, and how, for example, decisions like um, deciding to start the same starting eleven. Um, in the Columbus game, you, you know, decisions like that felt democratic, felt like the entire team was on board with it. Um, you know, they understood the logic. Um, and, and it, it definitely seemed everybody, every player I talked to after Anton, um, they felt, they felt exactly the same way. Um, so I, I wanted to know what the support of the players has meant to you this year uh, because it's, you know, it's clearly ever since the coaching change was made um, that it's not just a one-way street, but it's a, a two-way street. No, thank you for that because uh, I, I respect a lot uh, and I value a lot the opinion of the players because uh, for me, this is the most important thing. It's, it's, it's very important to get the confidence and the belief and the backing and the supporting from uh, the head of the organization, from the, the fan base, from the front office. But ultimately, the players are, for a coach, are the most important one together with the coaching staff because you work with them on a daily basis. Uh, the players are professional guys, you know, even if they are young, they know exactly what they know, what they what they're talking about because they have been coached in very diff many different countries, in many different environments since they are young. And uh, they understand straight away if they are learning or improving or not. <clears throat> and so their support it means a lot to me. It means uh, is the, without that, I think I wouldn't be able to do my job. Um, and so I want to thank them. Anton said that uh, I'm very happy about his quotes, but at the same time, I felt that the boys were fantastic uh, always. Um, and I, I, I've been very proud of them, even when things didn't go well in terms of results. And I felt that they always worked hard and tried to follow what I was asking them to do. I think as a coach, you have to explain why you do certain things because if you want them to get on board, they need to understand why. It doesn't mean that 
you know, then you have to change necessarily your approach, but you have to be clear with them. And uh, this is a group of players that said from day one, even day one when I signed from the club that I love. And uh, I really enjoyed my time in MLS before, and that was one of the reasons I wanted to come back. I really enjoyed the attitude of the players, the work ethics. And uh, I think we have a fantastic group of, uh, of men here. And... Um, there is no other club that I would like to sign, if I have to be honest, rather than Charlotte FC. I know it might, people might think that I am exaggerating, but I can assure you that it's not an exaggeration. I have a heart this project, and I want to give as much as I can to this project to bring it to the next level. And then, like everything, you know, everyone is an interim coach, even if they don't have the, the label attached to it. Then there will be people that would be better maybe to bring it to the next level. But for now, we are very focused and I'm very focused on this group of players to go to the next level, which I think they're very capable of. Great. And this is quick. Anton, I asked him, you know, does does he see competing above the playoffs last year going, uh, you know, going for the Supporters' Shield for the MLS Cup? And his response was, um, you know, why why settle for the bare minimum? Um, so so where is the is this team competing to be the best number one next year, and do you feel confident that, that you, and Charlotte FC will be in the, the conversation? Yeah, this is exactly what I was talking about, managing expectations. Uh, our expectation is to do better than this year, to improve uh, on what we have uh, created so far. Uh, but it's important to be confident, it's important not to be overconfident and to, you know, because otherwise, uh, every time you lose a game, and you can lose a game, uh, then it looks like is uh, the end of the world. Instead, we have to see a gradual progression. Like I, we said it this year, and we have to, we have to see a gradual progression next year as well, uh, game by game, in the way we play first and foremost. Because the better you play for me, the more chances you have to, to get the result you want. And so this has to be our our goal. So yes, in trying to go as far as possible, but managing our expectations uh, because we want to do we want to bring Charlotte in a position to be better and better, but also sustainable. You know, you wouldn't want to have a great season and then the season after uh, we go down again, and then we have to be gradually build ourselves up and stay there. This is the big challenge. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Uh, we'll do two more, John and then Caleb. John, you there? Sorry about that. Uh, Christian, one, I know there's one game left in the season, but what do you most proud of since you took over? You mentioned the, the work ethic the team has and they follow your instructions, but I know you obviously have this game against the Red Bulls on Sunday, but looking back on the season, well, what are you most satisfied with and presuming that you're here next year, what would you like to see more of going forward, going forward for next season? Yeah, uh, yeah, John. Many things I, looking back, I'm satisfied with the boys. Other, other things that less satisfy <laughs> and we need to improve. But that if I have to choose one thing is the intensity that the boys are putting in, in every training session. Now, when I look at that, that really give me confidence that, you know, we are heading in the right direction because in modern football, if uh, you don't control the tempo of the game, you cannot control the game. And if you want to control the tempo of the game, you need to play with intensity. And to play with intensity, you need to train with intensity. So I think that uh, our boys are training with an intensity now that is gradually improving. I'm also happy with the work we have done with the performance department because we didn't really know each other beforehand. And uh, gradually, the players were brought up to play and train with this intensity that we want, that is much like intensity. And uh, we didn't have many injuries, you know in muscular injuries. We had some uh, like impact that are very difficult to predict or to avoid. But um, 
I am very happy with the work we have done together. So that would be the one thing that I'm most uh, proud of. Can I ask another? Yeah, just one more. Okay. Um, you've had two meetings with the Red Bulls. Obviously, you lost the first one 3 1, and then you beat them 2 0. What do you think is the difference that you were able to beat them the second time? And specifically, what do you think would be some of the keys on Sunday? Yeah, uh, you might be uh, a Red Bull uh, in disguise, a Red Bull guy in disguise. So I'm not going to go too much into detail. No, but joking apart, I think that. Uh, Red Bulls, they have uh, a, a very clear identity, which I like in uh, in their own football group. That's what we want to build here, uh, to have a clear identity. Not exactly the same, but to have an identity. And they play always with this uh, ability to press you, to be aggressive, to be in your face. Very good in transitions. So we need to be careful of that. We need to play our game, but at the same time to be careful of uh, those moments in which they can capitalize and punish if they go, if they, uh, if we allow them to do. So it's going to be a tough game, a physical. Um, they will want to end the season well at home, but we also want to do well again to keep going our momentum. So it's going to be it's going to be an interesting, uh, an interesting game to play. It's always uh, interesting to play against them. We'll end it with Caleb. Hey, Christian, good to see you. Hey, Caleb, good, good to see uh, you. Yeah, good to see you too. Uh, I wanted to just ask just a quick question. How important is it to win uh, against the Red Bulls and send the season on a positive note? Yeah, I mean, to win a football game, Caleb, is always important. I mean, the boys are happy if they win in the 5 side, in the small-sided game that we play today. You know, most clubs have been working. They take picture and they, they as soon as they go back to their phone, they want to publish to show that they are on the winning side, let alone when you play a league game. So even for that point of view, it's very important. It's also important because we are playing for a table and it's, also, it's always very good to, to finish as high as possible in the table. You know, it, it's better to arrive 15 than to arrive uh, 16th, 17th or 18th. So we, want, we have that in mind and to finish on a good note is great. Because he leave every he would leave everybody with, uh, with a sweet taste in the mouth and uh, for many different reasons. But I think our boys are obviously like every professional footballer, very competitive, and they will want to win the game uh, because that's what they do. They play to win, you know. They play to 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 be the opponent to impose the the themselves. So for us, it's going to be every game is very, very important. Great. Thank you so much. Have a sa yeah. safe trip over there. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Thank See you, you Saturday. Bye. Thank you, Christian. Thank you. Sunday.